Hi guys, Dahlia here, welcome to my channel. Last week I uploaded the sarcastic writing tag, which was met with a fair few laughs. I truly appreciate all of your sweet comments and I'm so glad you guys found it enjoyable. This week is dedicated to the naughty list tag. Created by Jenna Morassi in 2016, this tag must be answered with characters from your work in progress. And this year, she brought out a new version. Jenna tagged me on Tumblr last year, but I wanted to save it for YouTube. But eventually, too much time went past, so I didn't upload it. And I wanted to obviously upload it around Christmas time because it's a Christmas tag. So I actually planned to do it this Christmas. After telling Jenna this, she told me to just wait a little bit longer because she was actually bringing out a new video. And I'm so glad that I did because this tag is hilarious. Jenna's video will be in the cards above and the link to her channel will be down below in the description bar. She's an amazing author full of support and advice and her videos are hilarious. If for some reason you haven't watched even one of them, then I highly recommend that you go and check her out like now. Or after this video, of course, you know. Whichever one. Let's get into the video. So the rules are, one, provide a brief description of your novel before you start, and this is to be no more than five sentences. And number two, if your cast is fewer than 15 characters, you can't use the same character more than twice. But if your cast is larger than 15 characters, then you can only use the character once. And number three, which isn't really a rule, but I kind of added it in because it kind of is, and it is explain your answers. Ali Montague is set to marry the Prince of Shiro. This will save Orville, her current state, from imminent war and she will then co-rule a foreign country. There's just one problem. Rebel Acrogenus are attacking the state which had turned them into monsters. On her wedding day, Alia is attacked and injected with a serum that leaves her paralysed. It also transforms her appearance. She is left abandoned in a hospital room where her powers begin to emerge. When all hope is lost, she encounters a group of rebel acrogenists who need that said power. And while she attempts to gain their trust, the truth of what her parents have done and are still doing emerges. She has a choice, run from fate or build her power to take down those she once loved and trusted. Here are the questions. Number one, which character is so into the holidays they nearly cause a street-wide power outage from all their Christmas lights? Siren, the cocoa-skinned enchantress from my current work in progress, um, the Acro Contessa, loves anything bright and shiny. She will go overboard keeping her neighbours up at night and somehow convince them that it's the right thing to do because she wants to spread the cheer for the children. So if the parents tell her to take the lights down, then it means that they're ruining it for the children. She loves to make people happy and the children would absolutely delight in all the colours and the lights and just the effort that she went into making her place this beautiful, brightly lit thing that you could probably see from space. A huge Merry Christmas sign would be above her door and a life-size Rudolph pulling a sleigh would be on her lawn and then fairy lights would just be everywhere. They would cover every single inch of the outside of her home. Number two, which character attends the office New Year's party with one date and goes home with someone else. So I hate to demonize this specific character, but I feel like he would be the one that would do this. And I feel like, you know, in his life, he's probably done this a few times, but this would be Copernicus. After spending some hours with probably two other women in a private hotel room, he would take home a girl that was blackout drunk. But it wouldn't be like this thing of him taking advantage of her because he would just be as tragic as she was. And they would both be the sort that wouldn't feel like they were at an office party. It would be like they were out at a club and they would totally forget where they were. Then his date would probably be driven home by a co-worker who probably understands all of Cope's antics because she would have gone through the same thing with him or something similar to that because he, he can just be a little bit selfish and not self-aware. It's not that he's mean, it's that he just doesn't, he's not good at dating. He doesn't kind of understand the rules of dating. Number three, which character is more than happy to steal the Hanukkah gelt from poor unsuspecting children? Semyon, hands down. <laughs> Honestly, he would be the type that would steal the chocolate 
and then eat it in front of the kids. And he would also convince them that he deserved the chocolate more than they did because he had to put up with them whining and demand demanding when he could be spending time with a demanding whining woman instead, which is what he would prefer. Sam's not good with children. He believes they have this displaced energy and that they just never stop and they're annoying and they're, they're just too full on for him. He just wants to sit down and carve his knife handles or just, I don't know, wash the fire. Four, fill in the blanks. I saw blank character doing a whole lot more than blank verb in Santa Claus. They were full on blank action. So, <laughs> I tried to make this PG rated and I really hope that I succeeded. <laughs> I saw Alia doing a whole lot more than riding Santa Claus. They were full on grinding the meat. Number five. One of your characters decides to pre-game before church and passes out in the middle of a Christmas service. Which character is it? I feel like this would be Semyon again. He, he likes to drink and he feels really conflicted when he's in churches. So while trying to promote a respectful demeanor, he would have to stand up for a sermon or a song and end up face flat on the floor. Because obviously the blood would rush too quickly from his head and he would just topple right over. When he woke up, he would kind of pass off as being slain in the spirit and then say, oh look, you know, I need to, I need to go home because I'm just, oh, it's just such a bad experience for me. Oh, such a good experience for me, whichever the case may be. And so he had to go home. And then he'd probably go home and feel really bad about past transgressions and drink himself to sleep. Number six. Which character hasn't been seen since winter began because they refused to deal with the snow? So Regina, as strong as she is mentally and physically, hates the cold. She would be walled up next to the wood fire with a huge blanket draped around her and a hot cocoa in her hand and practically on tap. And even with all this she would complain of the cold. Everyone would accommodate her even though the room would be sweltering and they wouldn't even mention anything about going outside in the snow to her because she has a really short fuse and a really big temper and the power of extreme strength to go with it. Number seven. Which character completely forgot about the holidays and ends up re-gifting to everyone? Edla has never been one for traditional celebration. Instead of getting into gimmicky traditions like what he would assume a Christmas celebration would be, he likes to kind of get the important things done. And then once he's done that, he'll move on to another important thing. He doesn't see parties as important. He sees more like saving the world while his friends get drunk as the important thing. The presents he would rustle up to re-gift would be something like nuts and bolts and maybe a bit of jerky that he found in, in his cupboard. And I mean, you know, if, he, if he's got too many pairs of socks, he might just kind of, you know, fold them up and stick them in a bag and then be like, oh, look, look what I got you. I heard you needed some socks. So, here you go. Number eight. Which character has such crappy luck they only discover their potato allergy after pigging out on Latkes? Brayden is always down on his luck. He's like the character within the trilogy that just nothing ever goes right for him. People use him. He kind of is just a nice guy that would do what anyone tells him to do or asks him to do. He's also a nervous fellow and wouldn't really feel comfortable eating in front of everyone. He would feel like either it was rude or he'd be too busy talking so then he couldn't be eating at the same time because he didn't want to look like a pig or like he was uninterested. So what would end up happening is the lab kiss would be the only thing left over after Alia and Copernicus ate all the treats. And Semyon, out of niceness, would probably say, hey look man, you know, you've got to eat something otherwise you're probably going to end up fainting because you need to have some sort of sustenance in you after hours of a party and drinking. And he would get him some of the Latkes and Brayden would eat it and probably go red in the face and swell up. He would become so suspicious of Semyon. Like he's already wary of Semyon, but it would become even worse because then he's like, oh, obviously this brutish Veronikovian is trying to kill me. Like now I have the evidence and it wouldn't end well. Number nine, the Krampus has arrived to punish your very bad characters. Which character is kind of into it? So the other day I watched the new Krampus movie and uh, it was not as good as I thought they could have done. Like they could have really made that movie horrifying, but instead it was kind of just more funny. I still enjoyed it, but, meh, but now I know more about the Krampus, I feel like 
the one that would fit this would be Faustina. She would see him arrive and immediately flood her basement. She's been treated very poorly by lovers, so now she kind of knows what she wants and she goes for it. And some brutal passion is kind of just what she needs. Number 10. One of your characters should be on the naughty list but has convinced Sam to declare their name. Which character is it and what is their means of persuasion? Definitely Semyon. He can be very alluring when he wants something. It might be his inability to speak English well that people like about him or he has this kind of bad boy demeanor thing or this misunderstood demeanor that you know you know the way girls are they seem to flock to that sort of thing so he has a lot of pretty stupid girls that just really adore him and and men too I'm not gonna lie so he would definitely lure Santa in with some some of the goodies except he would leave him high and dry you know because that's why Samuel is he's just like well you know you really want me now and I'm just gonna walk away because you're gonna follow me and I'm really making him out to be an asshole and I guess he kind of is but there's more to him than just that nature okay just trust me just read it you'll you'll see and if the jolly old man tried to push it any further Simon would just threaten him with death which you could make last days months if you wanted to so that concludes this tag thank you so much for watching today if you haven't watched Jenna's video, please click the cards above because you will get a whole heap of giggles out of it. I tag Emily Bourne and Rachel Steven to this tag. If you haven't seen any of their videos, please click the link in the description bar below and go and check them out. They're both lovely ladies who share really helpful writing advice. If you have any questions or want me to cover a specific topic, please drop a comment below. I post writerly videos on Thursdays and next week I'm doing the, doing the 2017 edition of the All of the Tube Christmas tag. As you know, I'm not really into the whole Christmas thing. I don't particularly celebrate it. I mean, I kind of am this year in a more traditional Christmas sense. But normally I don't celebrate it, but this tag is really fun and Emily tagged me and she's an amazing author. You know what? I love tags too, so I'm going to do it. I'm just going to see how it goes. So thank you for watching today and I'll see you next Thursday. Bye!